Hey everybody, it's James Holloway again from the Gonzo History Project, and today we're answering some more reader questions. This next question came up in a conversation with reader Kit, who asked, The Dark Ages, how dark were they really? Um, I think most people who read my blog are probably aware that the term Dark Ages is no longer really used by historians, or at least not in the sense in which it was originally intended. Um, we, think of, we tend to think of Dark Ages as a term that people in the Renaissance used to criticize a medieval period that they saw as unsophisticated or uh, lacking in culture, uh, but actually it's, it has a slightly earlier origin than that, although I guess you could say that it's a, a Renaissance or edge of the Renaissance thing, but it dates to the 14th century, um, and it was Petrarch who first kind of popularized the idea that the Middle Ages ever since the fall of Rome, which is conventionally dated to the 470s, were an age of darkness. And what he was referring to is really the decline in Latin literature. Uh, in many ways, uh, there are, you know, other forms of art and literature that flourished during the Dark Ages, um, during this, to say, the medieval period. These days, we're more likely to use the term uh, to refer really only to the early medieval period, so from around the end of the Roman Empire to eh, give or take the 11th century. Um, and where that division is made tends to depend on the history of which country you're talking about. So when uh, we talk about England, which is my specialty, that's usually the Norman conquest in the mid to late 11th century. You know, again, conventionally dated to 1066, but like everything, it was a process. So how dark were the Dark Ages? Well, in terms of them being times of uh, illiteracy, it is probably true, right? Literature in its sort of classical form uh, takes a hit. That is to say that people aren't writing Latin prose that's as good by classical standards uh, as what's being written in the height of the Roman era. Um, but, of course, that doesn't mean that other art forms aren't flourishing. So I obviously, as a lover of, um, you know, old English poetry and old Norse poetry, um, and of the old Norse sagas, which come along somewhat later in the, the high medieval period, uh, I obviously am not disposed to think of the early medieval period as being an era that doesn't produce good art. If you've accepted that the standards of the Roman world, the standards of classical art, are the only way in which you can measure good art, then by that definition, there's not a lot of good art happening. Uh, in the early Middle Ages, but I think that that's a tremendous disservice to the the, the, the vibrancy and power of medieval art um, and medieval literature. Now, that there were a time when there was not as much education as during the Roman period, that is, you know, that's certainly true. Um, although, again, maybe not as true as people might think, uh, both in that people tend to rather uh, overestimate the general level of ignorance in the early medieval world and tend to overestimate the level of education uh, in most Roman communities, I would expect. That they were dark ages in terms of violence and chaos and Vikings everywhere and, you know, I don't know, the different raids from uh, the, the, the Magyars or the, the Saracens or whatever. Um, I, I don't think that that's necessarily true either, because although it is certainly true that there was a lot of warfare during the early medieval period, I don't think that you can point to the late Roman period and say anything different. Um, you know, that there was a great deal of violence and chaos and uncertainty. Uh, I, the late Roman period is a byword for violence and chaos and uncertainty. So, uh, that necessarily things were, uh, were... Uh, uh, getting worse, I'm not sure we can 100% agree on. Um, the Dark Ages these days, although it's not how the term was originally used to mean, but people sometimes say Dark Ages when they mean uh, a period about which we don't know very much. That is to say, the decline in literacy in Western Europe uh, results in a period where there's not as much written history going on. And that is, you know, that is fair enough. Um, particularly in some cultures, we just don't have a whole lot of written information. But then again, with my background as an archaeologist, I don't necessarily 
concede that a lack of written information means that we don't know anything about the history or culture of a particular period. It just means that we have to focus our attention on different things. Um, so in that sense, we probably know as much about the cultures of the so-called Dark Ages as we do of any other period. Um, just that we don't necessarily have great written history. And again, first, the, we might have more historical sources than people suspect. And secondly, um, I mean, I'm not an expert in the Roman period, but I do know that there are individuals whose lives are, you know, pretty patchily documented. And there are cases where we don't have um, as good uh, a textual history as we would like. So again, this might be uh, a case of overstating how complete our knowledge of other periods is relative to the early medieval. Now, I'm kind of being disingenuous here. Um, uh, because, in fact, it's all those quote-unquote dark periods in the early medieval West that are what I like about it so much. Um, you know, I started out doing history, uh, focusing more or less on modern history, and it was only quite by chance that I took a paper that focused on the early medieval, and that completely changed what I wanted to study because of the particular challenges that come with studying a period where there just is not as much textual um, uh, evidence. I mean, there's probably, like when I did the Cuban Missile Crisis, there's probably as much written about the Cuban Missile Crisis um, as there is about whole decades of early medieval England. So about, you know, two weeks. Um, in 20th century America as rigorously documented as vast great swathes of, uh, of early medieval history. And it was the challenge of combining that and with uh, archeological sources and trying to come to conclusions based on that unique mixture of different kinds of historical evidence that I thought was so interesting about that period. So actually in some ways, you know, we can say that the dark ages are dark historically, but I don't think that that means that we don't know or can never know very much about them, just that we have to approach them in a different way. Um, now that term Dark Age gets applied to, um, gets applied to different historical periods as well. So we talk about um, Dark Ages in, uh, in other cultures. So there's a, there's a Greek Dark Age. Um, again, just means a period that we don't have a great deal of written historical evidence for, although uh, or, or of uh, sort of characteristic art for, I think, in that case. Although, again, not my period. I'm not an expert. Um, but people kind of assume, I think, even today, that sense of the Dark Ages carries this stereotype of violence, ignorance, superstition, primitive technology. Um, and, uh, and in some ways, that is fair. In other ways, it exaggerates how advanced other periods were. Um, and in some ways, it's just people projecting their stereotypes about a barbaric world onto uh, a particular historical period. So people like, I mean, you know, people either hate or like the Viking Age for the same reason, in that they think of it as a time when, you know, bold raiders sailed the seas and might was the only law. But the reality, as always, is just much more complicated and nuanced. And even when we don't have uh, good textual sources, we often have rich archaeological evidence that tells us a good deal um, about these civilizations if we can only interpret it. Um, anyway, so that's the Dark Ages. Dark Ages, it's kind of dark. Um, but I don't know that we can necessarily say that in terms of sort of violence and, and chaos, they were any darker than the supposedly civilized period that immediately preceded them, other than by Petrarch's very specific standards of, you know, what was Latin literature like in those days. Um, and uh, dark in the sense that we don't know very much about them from written records, I think that's probably fair. Although again, that might be exaggerating how much we know from the written records of certain other periods that we don't consider to be dark ages. Um, but um, I agree that there are different challenges in the study and interpretation of the early medieval period. Um, I just kind of think that that's a good thing. I mean, not a good thing, but it's because it can be very frustrating, of course, but kind of what I like about them. Okay. Well, anyway, um, I hope that answers the question, although the question predictably the answer is, uh, you know, kind of. Um, how dark were they? Sort of dark. 
Um, anyway, tune in next time as I answer more reader questions and uh, check out the blog, gonzohistory.wordpress.com for more articles, tired old jokes, and irreverent historical photo memes when I get around to them. All right, thanks again.